Welcome to the Shabby and Man podcast. We are partners, parents, podcasters, broadcasters, and everything else in between. Namaskar, dosto. Welcome to the show. Should we ta- start with something quite exciting? Well, I'll give you a hint. The names James. I'm not saying Bond. I'm mm-hmm. saying James and Orik. James and Orik. That sounds like a Hollywood and Bollywood collaboration. Christopher Nolan and Karan Johar no. making a film together. Orik Goldfinger. You must have seen the movie Goldfinger. Indeed, I yeah. have many and years ago. An iconic scene. Can I just say, not as many times as Brits have seen it over and over and over again every Christmas. I've only about seen it once. Fifteen. Forget Christmas in the old days, it's Christmas night comes virtually every every week. other day. Yes. yes. Um, so, so why is Gold, it so iconic? Goldfinger plays a round of golf hmm. with Bond, James Bond, hmm. and of course his henchman Oddball does a bit of cheating. Hmm. So that iconic. How can you cheat in golf? He moves the golf ball when no one's looking. Oh, okay. Makes it close to the That's hole. It's a bit of a baby plot, isn't it? <laughs> moves the golf ball. Are you sure he doesn't tamper with the weight of the iron? Look, are that you, sounds more sophisticated. Are you criticizing a Bond movie? No, I'm not. I'm and that also, it, that also a Sean Connery Bond movie. No, I'm not criticizing. I'm just pointing out that it might be a period of its times when people were simpler and they didn't question the potholes in the plot. Listen, most Bond movies have got more holes than a Swiss block of Swiss cheese. So don't worry about it. All right, okay. Okay, don't. <laughs> let's talk about holes <laughs> on the golf course. <laughs> let's not get uh, cheesy. Yeah, let's not get cheesy. Um, so pedantic is that what you want to say? I was going to say don't. It's uh, it's a very minor point. No need to be pedantic about okay. it. Okay. So Ori Goldfinger cheats in this iconic scene hmm. in a certain golf course. It's a very famous golf course, which has been used in many movies. Yeah. It's been used in another Bond movie. It's been used in Wimbledon. Hmm. It's been used in those Guy Ritchie movies, Rock and Roller, hmm. and I think in um, uh, Layer Cake. Layer Cake, which is the movie that was Make. watched and got Daniel Craig as Bond. So mm. everything is goes round in circles. Mm. I know exactly. You know what I'm talking about. Why don't you tell a dear Shrotao what I'm talking about? So apparently this famous iconic golf scene from Goldfinger was filmed in a place called Stoke Park. And very recently I think you pointed out in the last 6 months I of think, the year. Yeah, I think last year it was bought by as they like to say in this country, India's richest man, the Ambani's. Yeah. And as we know, one of the biggest um, talking points in India right now is the Ambani wedding. They had a three-day pre-wedding uh, event in Jamnagar, which is their hometown in Gujarat, which had the biggest celebrities from all over the world fly in, from Ivanka Trump to Mark Zuckerberg to Rihanna, uh, Rihanna to um, uh, I think even the Google Google. Yeah, Who Mark. Was no, uh, not Mark Zuckerberg. Who's the other person? Google, uh, the Indian guy. Not the Indian guy, the actual... Oh, you, you mean Microsoft, you mean Bill Gates. Bill Gates, Microsoft, thank you very much. So they had national and international celebrities, virtually all of Bollywood for the first time ever, the three Khans on stage entertaining Radhika and Anand Ambani, etc, etc. And when people said, oh my God, this is like probably the event of the decade, they were reminded sweetly that it was only the pre-wedding festivities and that the wedding was scheduled for July. So, long story short, although we like to long everything out. Um, elongate it. Elongate it. Uh, Stoke Park was bought by the Ambani's. Stoke Park is in the outskirts of London, right? It's not essentially London. It is Buckinghamshire. Buckinghamshire, right. Well, it is closer to Slough than London. In the same way that Gurgaon is part of Delhi, right? Yeah. So they bought over Stoke Park and Stoke Park is now, I think it has been officially confirmed to be the venue of the Ambani wedding this July. So it's probably one of the many venues. <laughs> no, I think, is yeah, you're right. Venue? No, because it's owned by them. And again, it's going to be a two, three day affair. So what we're saying is definitely something is going to be happening there. Yes. So us London Wallers. We'll have to keep our eyes peeled. If you yeah. station, if you stood outside Heathrow, uh, uh, outside the celebrity terminal, wherever that might be, you might see a lot of Bollywood stars and international stars fly in and out of London, particularly that weekend. In fact, they've it's named July, the date as well. Twenty fifth yeah. July or something like I that. Twelfth July. Is it something like that? So, which is the reason why people are talking about Stoke Park and people are talking about uh, not so much Goldfinger but the Ambani wedding. Um, so it was a famous golf course. I don't know if it still is a golf course. Probably is. Yeah. So expect at least the Indian press to go into meltdown. Expect Bollywood to shut down for three, four days when everybody flies in because all people are going to be obsessing over is who's wearing what, 
who seen with whom who wore it better was it the patodis was it the khans who anant and radhika was seen schmoozing talking, who, how talking, many sorry talking about the khans i know you have an obsession with anant ambani's watches you mentioned that's the last time we mentioned the pre wedding yes. festivities as well so is he wearing something that he's worn before or have they got something commissioned specially for the wedding with an obscene amount of diamonds studded on it all of those thing conversations will be had all over again i was going to say that talking about the khans i have not seen this uh, new kapil sharma show on netflix yes you know it's called the great kapil show or something yes. some weird name they've given it yeah. but i think the great indian kapil show i think amir khan was a guest last week yes indeed he was he talked about uh, reena datta his ex wife yeah. whatever, whatever whatever and i think the week before that was saif ali khan or someone who was another khan I is think. it i know amir khan this year, this week but i'm not sure which other khan but coming back to because the ambani wedding was such a big talking point and people were dissecting every aspect of the wedding including the ambani jewels and everything else so people are already taking bets on how can they possibly outdo themselves because they already wore the most expensive jewels they already had the best and the biggest designers designing for them indian and international i mean how can they kind of you know top that uh, and it's it's quite a pertinent point i think because even those who, for whom money is no object when you've already put on a show which seems like you know a, a fantastic blockbuster film how do you kind of this is like this would be like india's met ball i suppose everyone would yeah that. absolutely yeah. absolutely so talking about jewels yeah i just remember that um on your show two three days ago you did such a long badha charaki story about jewels and badha charaki to bilkul nahi it is absolutely accurate no no and i mean in a very nice way badha charaki was very it was a very elaborate story is what i mean yes not badha charaki badha chara badha na charana has a different connotation by the way if you know your hindi yeah. badha na charana means to kind of fake it not fake it but over hype something yeah, which yeah, may yeah. or may not be true Long, elaborate sounds better. Okay, I did on the jewelry that of is Sanjay Leela Bansali. Was it Hira Mandi? Hira Mandi, yes. And also other movies. Yeah, other Because movies. You mentioned jo- uh, Jodh Akbar as well. Jodh Akbar, Dev Das. Which, which is what Ashutosh Gawari uh, movie? Ashutosh Gawari, sir. And they are also this piece also speaks about Bahubali, and they are saying that although the jewelry in Bahubali is minimalistic compared to what you see in Hira Mandi. For, for everyone listening, why don't you explain the 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 gist of the story? Was that to what great lengths they went to get authentic pieces yes you know we have to say that i've seen the entire series but i'm you know everything yeah. is under embargo we can't talk about it until talk, the next episode we're talking about hiraman we're Mandi. talking about hiraman the eight episode sanjay leela bansali story on lahore's red light district set in 1920s india pre independent india it is the story of these courtesans and how they held sway over society and how they were mixing with the nawabs to the extent that you know they were actually influencing a lot of the political and financial decisions at the same time there's a lot of unrest growing amongst indians against the british and so the freedom movement that's gradually in, is that, gaining that's the backdrop of the story that's the backdrop but you were mentioning some kind of uh, pearls yes so those who've done research and those who like their jewelry as much as i do well at least looking at jewelry if not buying so much um they've said that sanjay leela mansali has gone to great lengths he is a perfectionist but he's really outdone himself this is the most opulent film of his career he, uh, but keeping in mind he did devdas yeah, which was also very opulent devdas bajirao mastani you name it ramleela all his you know films padmavat all of them are so opulent uh but he's really outdone himself in fact there's a cover feature in ad magazine architectural design india where he takes the crew the ad crew to the sets of padma uh, uh, hiramandi and he says it's the most expensive set ever in my life how ironic for because, a boy who grew up ne- netflix is paying for it yes and he says how ironic for a boy who grew up in one uh, in a corner of one room in a mumbai chawl you know for me to finally dream of this opulence and make that come true today but coming back to the jewelry uh they say that you know they commissioned a jeweler in delhi to make all the jewelry did all the research and everything collectively it comes to about 300 kg which is a very big deal for anyone who knows how jewelry is weighed in ounces yeah they have about 10000 pieces divided between all the cast members who wear it and they said that forget the emeralds forget the rubies forget the diamonds it is the basra pearls that are to die for basra is what a place basra is a place right. which gives you the most beautiful shimmering shining flawless pearls and because Hiramandi is set in Lahore there is a lot of the avad 
influence in their cuisine, in their tahzeeb, in the way they dress. So in that kind of a scenario, you know, the women are wearing pasta, they're wearing a nut, they're wearing nolakahars and jewelry which is reflective of a certain period and of the nobility as well. Even though they're, they're not the nobility. They're dripping in jewelry. They're dripping in jewels. And it's quite fascinating to know that a man who could have easily made these actresses wear good quality costume jewelry, we wouldn't have known any better looking from a distance. He actually took the trouble or rather Netflix gave him the freedom to go and liaise with a jeweler and commission these pieces. And I'm sure there's a cunning business plan behind it. I'm sure this jeweler is going to mint it by selling their range of Hira Mandi inspired jewelry. Because authenticity counts. counts yeah. yeah, that's true. So if you are into period costumes, if you're into, I maintain that to truly appreciate Hira Mandi, if it is your kind of thing at all, you have to watch every episode at least twice. Once for the story, once for the artistic elements. Just to sidetrack a bit, didn't in Devdas, because Devdas is still in my head, hmm. didn't uh, Ash, Ashwarya Rai that is, hmm. wear very, very heavy jewellery? You know what, not very heavy jewellery, but mind you, Ash was still playing the not even the nobility but the upper middle class bengal upper middle class in case of hira mandi these are the tawaifs the courtesans who count the richest people including the nawabs as their clients and this is the time when each time she would do a mujra the nawab would throw a big portly of jewels at her so jewelry and money was no object for them so they are absolutely wearing the kind of jewels that commoners would you only dream of unless you were the nobility because the nobility was kind of throwing these jewels at them not that they could afford much but they had to look the part right to be the courtesans that everybody expected them to be uh, ash actually has a history of being in movies with this very opulent exquisite setups. yes and uh, actually jewelry. funny you should mention devdas devdas they said was actually i was thinking of jodha akbar about the other movie yeah jodha akbar she was because she's where playing princess Jodhabai Akbar, the Mughal emperor's wife, obviously she's draped in good, fine, the finest jewels from head to toe. But Devdas became a talking point because of its saris. Nita Lalla apparently, designer Nita Lalla commissioned some 300 saris from which Ash could have her pick or the Sanjay Bansali had his pick. So, but the movie was known for its saris. Hmm. Absolutely, because she's play, it's set in Bengal and you know Bengali women, women of a certain social strata especially that time, would absolutely wear the finest at the uh, behest. You, you're trying to talk about your Bengali credentials. I'm talking about my Bengali heritage. Did you not go to a Bengali fest this weekend, last weekend rather? I did, I did. Uh, and it is, of course, uh, it was uh, called Bengal Mohotsav. And it is something that people celebrate in India around Poyla Buishak, which is the first day of Buishak, officially the start of the Bengali calendar. And it was a celebration of Bengali food. There was shari, there was jewelry, and I bought a fair amount of all there, of those there things. There must have been dancing. There was dancing, and there was lots of debates on how um, intellectual and arty Bengalis are, and how they tried to chant. And in fact, somebody, it took me by surprise when I walked in. There was somebody on stage who was saying that Bengalis are born b with a business acumen. I had no idea. Clearly, I wasn't. I was yeah. spared that talent. Well, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I would have thought Punjabis. You think I married the wrong Bengali? Yeah, well, as I married the wrong Punjabi. You know, it's not that you have any business acumen either. But uh, I was surprised to hear that, that Bengalis have it in them to turn virtually anything into a business opportunity. That was news to me. But uh, yeah. news to me. Yeah, but it was it was a fun event and uh, it was quite nice. Did you get to eat some uh, I got to eat mutton chops. I had the sweets. typical mutton biryani. I packed both that of them. That was a bit of confusion it. because you said to me, I'm bringing home some mutton chops. Huh. And you thought it was like lamb chops. And I thought chops. I didn't realize it is what we call like cutlet. a cutlet, a mutton roll. That is what we call a chomp. Mm. Chomp. Chomps. Chomp. So there was a bit of a confusion but nonetheless and then I also got uh, not just confusion a bit of disappointment disappointment there you go Punjabi is expecting their robust mutton chops and then there was how you would not anyway appreciate, appreciate what? subtlety I knew, of I knew flavor what, I knew subtlety of say. flavor unless it is masala that hits you smack bang on your face I'm sorry but putting aloo in everything is not subtlety no listen there, there was no aloo in the cutlet okay there was only mutton and I think it had it was then what do you call it you know the the process where you dunk it in egg and then you dip it in uh, breadcrumbs no the 
egg flour flour or breadcrumbs and then you deep fry it. Oh, you mean just like any any dish just like any uh, deep, chips, deep any, fried any, anything battered deep fried cutlet yes that's what it was uh but the thing about a bengali biryani is that it does have aloo and it does have boiled egg as well and of course it has mutton so that was amazing uh gosh we've gone on about food for so long which no, brings no, me to another topic yeah i was going to talk about food one more food thing i ended up debating on my show that's what, that's, un- what that's what we're going to talk about completely unplanned yeah let's start from the start first of all it all started with with a listener of yours said mm-hmm. that they've never had a moolika prata so, so the first time a, li- a listener of mine who's actually an IT professional she works from home most days and more often than not i don't acknowledge this on air every day but virtually every day she asks me shabnam ji what should i make for breakfast today should i make this paratha or that paratha should i have this or should i have that should i should i have muesli or should i have that so now i always send her my preference so she asked me should i make gobi ka paratha or mooli ka paratha because i was really craving a mooli ka paratha which i haven't had in a while i said make mooli ka paratha and then she made it and she sent me a photo when i acknowledged it somebody else from manchester said to me that shabnam ji send some to me please i've never had a mooli ka paratha in my life and i said you must be joking how can you possibly say that and then i had this other like, listeners this, was this person from india or pakistan he's from india mm-hmm. he's from india and he's a punjabi he said i've never had mooli ka paratha no he actually i from his name i can't tell he may not be a punjabi and then i had my listeners from pakistan join in that shabnam ji we've had all sorts of parathas lamb keema paratha yeah, chicken yeah. keema paratha aloo ka paratha but we've never had any of this gobi paratha mooli paratha or the vegetable options keema paratha is world famous, famous. Yeah. yeah but they had never had these vegetarian parathas that we were talking about and i said how can you possibly get through a I bitter th- no, karachi I thought, winter that would be mooli ka paratha is a very indian delhi thing. thing maybe it is Maybe people down south in India also don't have mooli paratha. No, they don't have parathas down south. They have dosas and idlis instead, right? But to me, it seemed like an absolute shocker that people knew what a paratha was and yet they'd never tasted a mooli ka paratha. So, uh, what would be your favorite paratha? I think an aloo paratha is something that everybody loves because somehow flour and aloo and spices combine beautifully in paratha form. I like, of course, I like aloo parathas. Mm. I love keema naans, mm. keema parathas. Mm. I'm not so keen on the I know I'll have it I'll have a gobi ka paratha mm. I love gobi uh, mooli uh, like. I love methi ka paratha as well not a thepla mind you a paratha and a thepla are very different things a thepla is way for thing uh, yes, there's a different know. texture right but a paratha is more robust thepla is more gujarati yeah it is gujarati and a paratha is i think a, a completely a punjabi thing at heart absolutely amazing with uh, the, you know you have to have a aloo ka paratha mm. with kadak chai no, no white makkhan safed makkhan oh god don't say that thoda sa dahi makkhan agar laga rahe ho to dahi kyun lagaoge one or the other no because you want everything no, because you just everything. weird you just weird that's what it is um okay food ke alawa so then this led to another conversation about golgappas and pani puris and puchka which are this in my head i thought they're the same thing is just in different regions because india is such a vast country they call different names not just that i think the stuffing varies So a puchka I feel is the most is the mildest. Puchka is your Bengali one. Is a Bengali thing which I feel which is does I presume. Golgappa is what us Punjabis call it in Delhi. In Delhi. And uh, Pani Puri is what Pani Mumbai, Mumbai guys call it. Yeah. And when I said that I'm partial to a Golgappa nothing comes close to a Golgappa I had the Mumbai people in the Mumbai massive. The Mumbai massive in the UK up in arms saying how can you even say that it's absolutely unthinkable for us and she said I have to double check. Mumbai is not known for its chaat. Is it? No no it's known for pav bhaji and stuff like yeah. that. It's not chaat. It's a golgappa. No, what I mean is about it. Golgappa will come under the chaat. Not category. really. A golgappa and chaat are two completely different things. Okay. Uh, we'll save that for another day. Yeah. I But would say that golgappa is a chaat. Golgappa is not a chaat. Oh say, my god. If you say I'm going out for a chaat, you might just eat golgappa. You know what? It is like saying no. They both fall under street food categories. Snacks. Snacks. It's like saying oh, fish is same as a chip. Fish no. they're not the same no, thing. No, no, it's like saying fish is same as scampi, which it is. No, absolutely not. Golgappa and chaat are two completely different things. You know, they're enjoyed in two completely different ways. It's completely pointless having this conversation with you anyway, but have we kind of come to the end of the podcast and we've only spoken about food yet. We haven't spoken much about the rest of the stuff. I wanted to talk about I wanted to take a moment to talk about Chamkila's biopic by the way. Because I know it has been streaming on Netflix <laughs> for two weekends. We have only 3 points written down on a piece of paper. Which I can't read. Which all three we've done. Can I just Stock say? Stock Park, Golgappe, and Paratha. No, Golgappe and Paratha was one thing. 
and Bengal Mahotsav. No, that is all one thing. And the third thing written down is Chamkeel. Chamkeela. Yes. Can I just say while on the subject of food, you have just given us and listeners bear with me, try and imagine a scenario where it's beautiful outside. It's just stopped raining. This is London, of course, London's spring. Quite cold outside. You have fished out a bottle of Baileys which could be easily 200 years old from the back of the fridge and you've just poured me a glass of Bailey and I have a feeling that it's gone off. Again, I don't know if no, Bailey No, no, no. It, it's a it's a limited edition Baileys with it's called espresso. Oh, is that what you call it when it goes off? No, no, it's a that's limited why edition. It tastes different. Is it? You know, I, quite I, sure? I, I don't want to say the obvious, but sometimes you have to broaden your palate, you know. It is broaden you have to, your palate. You have, you have okay. to discover the world. No, just give me pani puri book pani, okay? And somebody told me you can't, you can't just do same old same old. Sometimes you got to, you know, just go for it. Oh, that or oh, your idea of going for it and breaking away from same old same old is having flavored baileys rather than the original. Is that what it is? I have a sneaking suspicion this is not right, but anyway, we'll discover soon enough. Talking about chimki. I will we'll know. Agar kal aapka pet kharab ho jaye, ha, then you are right. If you are fine, I was right. All right, okay? fine. So kal decide karenge. Happy. Kal decide karenge. Speaking of the chamkila biopic, Do we have time to speak about it? Let us why not? Because we have it's been streaming for 2 weeks. I watched it. You know, it's not set in stone that it has to be 20 minutes. It can be 23 minutes, yeah, 24 minutes. Imtiaz Ali's latest offering, Diljit Dosanjh and Parinidhi Chopra in the biopic headlining the story. Can I just say even though I grew up in Delhi, I grew up in India. I had no idea who even Chamkila I never, was. I, even I never never heard, heard of Chamkila. Mm. Only now I'm finding out just how iconic he was. He was the highest selling Punjabi artist, known for singing lewd, cheap, crass songs. Yeah, it was a, his songs had double meanings in there, but they were very, very popular. Very popular, and he packed out arenas up and down villages in Punjab. What very, is very popular. Double entendre. Yes. So, firstly, even though it is a film which has been brilliantly put together, Imtiaz Ali is a brilliant storyteller. Even though the story cuts back and forth in time, and you've got actual actual footage footage of Chamkila and his wife Amarjot singing. You've got actual footage interspersed with the stuff that Diljit and and are doing, and they're put together so beautifully. Even the story is a flashback. Then you come back to the present. Then you go back in time. Brilliantly done. Diljit Dosanjh absolutely aces the role. He's a phenomenal guy. I have to say, we've seen him on stage. We know just what a rock star he is. But for him to completely shed all inhibitions and completely mold himself to the demands of the character. hats off he's very much into art didn't he just come out with crew also yeah absolutely and i feel that the fact that chamkila did not have a big screen release and it went straight to netflix may stand against him otherwise i think no so it, far it, i've not seen any reason for him to not win every award under it won't stand against him because more people have probably seen it no that's fine netflix. but you know sometimes in these big award functions they might say that if it hasn't had a theatrical release then people still have that chip on their shoulder about OTT and big screen right so it would be highly unfair but so far again we we only like had 4 months into the new year now we're talking about uh, Daljeet i think i'm not sure about him but suddenly there is new trend of these collaborations with the um, sing- uh, singers yeah i i know that there's that um, stormzy yeah a rapper from south london yeah. with ap dilan yeah. canadian yes There's uh, Arijit and Bacha. Yeah, a hugely popular song that you like. Soul Soulmate is a nice yeah. song. I love the way they all started giving her English names to songs. Yeah. Uh, and um, all the songs, all the titles on that album Ek Tharaja are English titles, all of them. No, and Even Diljit is going doing yeah, the same thing. And I think Diljit is also done. It's all started with AP Dilan when he did that about you or for yeah. whatever. But can we just come back to Chamkila for 2 minutes? Sorry, yes. But is it so good? Parin Tejo is just as good. There's another guy who plays his sidekick and main friend. Even he's done brilliant. He's such a fabulous cast. They completely deliver what they were hired to do. Even though the story had very little emotional resonance for me because I didn't know this character, I really loved the way Imtiaz Ali throughout the film is also presenting the counter argument to Chamkila being this big star. What you are thinking as the audience somebody is already saying it in the film in the sense that oh but you know itne ashleel gaane gata hai uske sath to ye hona hi tha aisa aadmi dekha hai kabhi jo apni biwi se bhi aise gaane gawata hai then you see that he actually the fact that he was married with kids he kept that from his second wife he completely almost duped her into marrying her and then the the lady who sang with him was the lady who yeah who sang with him the tragedy of chamkila was that he was brutally gunned down him his wife and two of his band yes, members while they were that. on the way to a gig and he was only 27 Gosh. and the police never got to the bottom of the the case was just closed inconclusive you know that famous curse of 27 don't you 
Jim Morrison, Amy Winehouse. Well, there you go. So many of them. Yeah. So he was 27 as well. And they, Joplin. They never solved the case. And also, you know, a lot of people are saying that what stands out for you is the fact from the biopic is the fact that he was such a vulnerable guy. He was just a puppet in the hands of the people. You know, after Indira Gandhi's assassination and when Sikhs all over India, all over the world, in fact, had such a hard time, he stops singing all of this because naturally, you know, Punjab is going through turmoil. But then when somebody comes to him, the promoter who is losing out on making all that money. 1984, by the way. Yeah. yeah. In the aftermath of 1984, 85, early yeah. 85, when he comes up to Chamkila and he says, oh, but you'd better start singing because people want some kind of respite. They've been through this turmoil and there's too much hatred and all of that simmering. Maybe this is going to be a little outlet for them. So why don't you start singing again? So Beach may, advised by everybody else that you're actually, you know, our youth ko rahe ho, aise gande gande gaane ke and all of that. He had completely done a 360 degree turn and he started singing religious songs. But they see that Indra Gandhi writes ke baad, when he starts singing again, uh, um, you know, on, on the advice of his promoters and stuff, people do come and pack out the akharas once again. But when he starts off with these devotional songs, people say, no, 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 this is not what we've come here for. Go back to the songs that you're known for. Go back to all that cheap stuff, which is what people want. And he completely lapses back into it. So the question that Imtiaz Ali poses is the question that all Chamkila fans asked at the time. That who was responsible for the assassination? Were, were they the moral do you, police? Do you get to find out in the movie? No, nobody did. It's an inconclusive case. So obviously Imtiaz Ali is not going to suggest something. You come to your own conclusions. But it could have been anyone. Because when he suddenly, when his fame kind of really took off, there were so many other Punjabi singers who were singing more or less the same kind of songs. But somehow what he did with his wife touched a chord and overnight he had a meteoric rise. It captured the imagination. Imagination. So they think it could have been his rivals. It could have been the moral police because there were a growing number of people in Punjab saying that, oh my God, how obscene is this man? Something a bit different uh, but connected is the fact that in most weddings, hmm. in the mainly, you know, huh. Some of the songs are... No, no, that's rude. what Imtiaz Ali says. It's, that, you know, I'm expected. not trying to defend him. Uh, but this baseless allegation that a lot of people are saying that, oh, he was, you know, he objectified women and he was a misogynist and this and that. He's saying that, you know, I'm going to defend his character a little bit here because if you look at not just Punjabi, not just Punjabi in India, but if you look at most of these Shadi Wale Ganeji, he says exactly the same thing, that women are complicit. It's a woman saying something and a man saying something and teasing him and teasing her. And they're quite suggestive and cheap if you will but that's how traditional folk songs are there to be they are to be taken on their face value they're not to be taken as something that only chamkila kind of did right so on the whole i would say a riveting watch even if the character means nothing to you just the way his story has been put together by Imtiaz Ali is worth a watch so why do you watch this without me then because you were away that weekend as a shukare finally shanti me in one stretch, I'll be able to watch before you giving me a commentary on the backstory of Chamkila reminds me. Let me tell you about something else, which is some shiny, happy people or something or the other. There oh, you, you mean REM? There. Shiny, happy yep. people? Yeah. Okay, shall we say bye bye? Then? Yes, I think we should. Remember, wherever you are, this week we, as Londoners, have our local mayor elections. We're yes. voting for our London mayor. If somebody in Tanzania is listening to you right now, what can they do? No, about no, I'm it? just saying in India, you've got your elections. Mm -hmm. You've got the Indian elections. Yeah. We'll be probably having ours. Wherever your elections are, if you're having elections, vote wisely. And make sure you vote. Absolutely. It is your duty as a citizen of the world. If you want to see change, as Gandhiji said, be the change you wish to see in the world. Very nice. <laughs> until until next time. I was going to say from Chamkila to Mahatma Gandhi, that you, was a job. You, you you finished with a a deep quote there. Yes, which is very unlikely for this show, but uh, good. Should we say bye then? Yes, I think we should. And you know what to do, where to subscribe, what to do, and blah blah blah. So see you next time. Bye bye. Bye.